My name is Fortunate Ozo. My name is Mariam Abdullahi. Zulufisoye Adeniton. Falashade Ogurinde. Karina Igoniko. Slama Victoria. It's blessing on that enjoy. Zubaida Baba Ibrahim. Ziemi Daladima. Sarah Ayeko. Ijamo Kiriki Adaba. Smatha Asumatha Agas from. We had about 200 applications and there's always waste that time when you're doing the selection and you're believing, oh, why would we pick this person over this other person? Of course, having done this now for the fifth year, every time we get to the hall and people begin to speak, it comes to life and you say, we chose right. We actually chose right. These are the people that are supposed to be part yeah. of this program. They are not at the same levels of development as individuals. They're from different parts of the country. Their orientation about the changes that we need, they are different. The experiences are different. But it all comes together on that first day when you look around the room and people begin to introduce themselves, tell us about the expectation and speak to what they will do after now. So for this set, yes, we have chosen right. At least you can define the kind of woman you are. The Report to Women's project is a very unique intervention and that um, one can see over t the time has uh, contributed to uh, gender equality intervention in Nigeria and uh, I would say a big kudos to uh, Walishenka Centre for Investigative Journalism uh, for coming up with this idea. We started at a time when the reportage was very poor, and not only in Nigeria, but also across Africa. So the project has actually contributed immensely to the increase in the reportage of women and also with women reporting uh, stories, you know, uh, in Nigeria. From the very first day I walked in, it was obvious that this room had 12 ladies who electrified it. In every one of them, I saw confidence, I saw a zeal to win, I saw people who had tenacity, people who were bold, people who were daring, and people who basically wanted to own what it is they do. You, of course, notice a whole depth in terms of potentials, in terms of enthusiasm and all of that. But again, you could see some sort of uh, rough edges in terms of um, how to harness these potentials into issues that will be beneficial, not just to them and their profession, but also impact the society. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, yes, this is afternoon energy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, 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 we're all here. So this next session would be taken by a very powerful individual. I'm glad Motraya already gave introductions about her and told you she's called the general. So I want- The curriculum has been very intensive. We start early, we finish late. And it's, it has also served as a refresher to reinforce some of the things I know and those things I don't know, I get to learn new things. And uh, for some of the faculty members also have served as a form of inspiration. People you can aspire to, people that uh, have been there before you, they've been there, they've done that, and you get to see that, yes, those things you want to do, it's possible. For most female reporters, we feel alone. We feel that um, I don't have, um, you know, these women I can reach out to anytime I need help. And 
I must say, you know, meeting 11 other women who are doing amazing things. I made friends. I mean, these are people that I never knew. Uh, say, for instance, uh, Sarah, uh, I think um, when they had this train bus uh, collision somewhere at Tikeja, you know, I watched her on TV just after I left the scene and I'd done my reports. And I found that and I was like, wow, you did a good job. I really enjoyed your, your, your reporting that day. And, you know, we are friends now. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, lifelong sisters and, you know, colleagues in, in, in the world of um, journalism. I had challenges of how I was going to network with other people coming from different backgrounds. But we spent two days already and I called them my sisters. We are girls on fire. I have been able to um, have more confidence in myself to be able to carry out the leadership idea I have. I have more courage to, um, to venture into some of the fields or you know the, idea, the ideas I've been keeping in my mind. I feel like this place is the place where we, we are waking our desire to do more as women. And I am so glad I was here today. I'm so excited about this. One of the things that was like an, a, an awakening for me was knowing that I was different from these women and not different in like, um, let's say physically, but we spoke about it that socioculturally, I had limitations that these women, even if they are leaders in the newsroom, they might not consider. So it's a choice of, do I want to be there or do I want um, limitations to limit me forever? So I took that into consideration. And of course, I also learned how to um, talk about women um, issues in my news, to highlight women issues, not just to for talking sake or not just to report them, to make it in a way that something is being done. In the course of taking the session on uh, presentation skills and communication skills. A lot of them put it to good use. Everybody gave it their 100% when they had to make their presentations. And what struck me about that particular session was when they had to make their presentations, they all took it in good faith. I didn't see any long faces, even though some of uh, my observations may have come across as scathing. They were just basically ready to fall in line and appreciate the fact that this is an area that I probably uh, have no experience and there is someone telling us that this is what we need to do and they're basically soaking it in and like making sure that all of those things that they were able to garner from the few things I said they were putting it to good use. At different points in time I've learned so much about how to build my confidence and right now I'm really smiling in the camera. <laughs> I, I learned that it's quite important. You have a whole lot to say, but then you feel like you don't know anything, but you actually know a lot. But you think, oh, why should I say this? The men should say it. As women, we should come out more. You don't have to tick all the boxes before you really push, out, push yourself out there as a woman. I've learned that and that's really striking for me. I've actually learned a whole lot how to go out there to do investigative reporting, what to watch out for and I was able to develop my uh, my story idea and in no time I was able to come up with different ideas and what came out for me was how do I want to do it better compared to what has been done differently. So th these are some of the new things that I've really gained out so far. While one of our facilitators, Stella Dim Jacob, shared some of the challenges that she has to go through, it really, um, I found, I, I related with that and if she can do it, it then means I can also do it. And we've looked at investigative reporting, what it is, what it is not. Um, we've looked at women that have done investigative reporting and the sacrifices they've had to pay so that we know that this is what we are getting into. So you're not just walking into something, you know, as if you're going to sashay your way through, no. So we've come to see the realities of you know, what investigative reporting entails. And I'm so glad that I came. I think we have a good uh, set of uh, people uh, put together uh, to propagate the idea of uh, leadership in the newsroom and also uh, to also propagate issues around uh, women's development across, you know, the country. Um, in fact, I think we're literally set on fire. Everyone is on fire. 
It's been great meeting um, the fellow participants who are women like myself, female journalists who are all trying to do or who are doing wonderfully in their different, um, on their different platforms and all of us seeking to make a change. So it's been quite impactful. I've been challenged, I've been motivated. I know I can't leave this fellowship the same or this program the same way I came. You know, we've really been inspired and pushed to think beyond what we thought possible, beyond what we thought we could do. And one thing that has really struck me is the fact that here we're really made to understand that we're also leaders. I heard stories ranging from SGBV, heard stories that uh, talked about how to empower women journalists, heard stories as to how to take on a small matter in a manner that when it's done, the ripple effect will be such that uh, it will propel uh, empowerment of women in several ways. And I'm excited as what will be and what will happen at the end of the uh, uh, implementation of these projects. I had a whole lot to take home from Romy mom yesterday. His session was something else. I went home with a lot of things I never knew about, the CEDA, the uh, legal framework, uh, frameworks backing um, the legal rights of women in this country. I learned about the VAP law, which I uh, confirmed has been domesticated in my state. Uh, also the gender law, and that I do not know so much about it, but it was an eye-opener. After here, I am going right there to my state to find out the status of that particular law. And then he also talked about the Child's Right Act. That one is domesticated in my state. I've learned through this that we should go back to our different organization and the, our locality and to put government on their toes on the need for all these laws to be adequately implemented. So going forward, I would like to do reports and how I can also educate those people around my area, I mean in those states, on the need for them to know that they have a right under the law and this is what the law say about them and the need for also the policy makers to ensure that these laws are implemented. Top people who will believe that will be able to finish the fellowship will become champions, will join the troops that are already championing this course, will be on fire in their newsroom, be able to stand up to status quo that doesn't help, be able to also be voices that are not just always just challenging, but helping to build community. Am I doing enough? You know, you just keep asking yourself those questions. I, I saw myself asking myself that question numerous times during the course of the program. Am I doing enough? What's, what am I doing? Like, before now, I actually felt like I, I had my, my beat covered. I felt like I was, I was just doing everything necessary, everything I was supposed to do. But when I got here, I realized that there were actually gaps a lot of gaps, a lot of things I didn't do, a lot of things I thought I was doing well and I was good at that I was far from. And then I just realized the need to, you know, increase my pace, like the need to, to do more. It's been really, it's, it's, it's been a great time. And when Mrs. Motunrai was talking about the need to employ Rush, it was really inspiring. I mean, I, I, it's most time there are many stories you want to attend to. Sometimes you tend to forget that there are stories you need to follow up on, you know. But that's, that particular segment made me understand. I don't just report, I keep following, like I keep following up. I do not want to make promises, but I'm very sure there is absolutely no way I am going to be where I am before I came here. We're excited. I am very excited about the kind of projects that they are talking about. We are excited about the fact that they are thinking of community. They're not just thinking about themselves. They're thinking of colleagues that are male and female. They're thinking of the next generation of female journalists. Some of them want to do things around schools of journalism. Some of them want to do things in their newsroom to engage the leadership of their organization. Some of them want to help colleagues to hone their own dreams. So we're excited about this. We're also excited about the investigative stories that are going to come out of this, stories that are going to hold leadership accountable and ask them questions about their seriousness on the things that they tell us. I feel challenged that my knowledge, my exposure, 
my scope of writing article should not be limited i should think wide i should not feel like i'm not capable of doing things then when you go to the newsroom you're given responsibilities you stay at the back seat you feel the men are superior enough they are more capable to handle it you shy away from such responsibilities i feel inspired that i should be able to take up such such uh, responsibilities even if I'm, i cannot do it i'll work and ensure that I build my capacity so that I'll handle such um, issues. I like the fact that we have 12 women who can stick up for themselves, who can defend what it is they believe in and are not afraid or shy of expressing themselves to a point where you wonder, why are we not just inducting them as fellows? Why are we going to wait until August? I've been looking forward to this program for a couple of years now and I can say that I had expectations and when my expectations met, super yes <laughs> it was it was really amazing the course was not just um itemizing what we should know as reporters particularly female reporters it also goes to speak to our lives as women you know so we're not just um learning about the profession we're also learning how to cope with life as a woman in a space uh, dominated by men you know so that was really um, life-changing for me personally and um, I think now I, I kind of like have a what I say a purpose for why I am in journalism. Across the days that we've been working and talking and you know trying to refine uh, the, what they have in them they definitely have come a long way. Uh, when they pitch their ideas, when they pitch their investigative stories, their proposals, you can see some uh, the clarity that they have, the connection that they have to their ideas, the confidence that they were exp they were ex expressing themselves. You 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 have a feeling that we are, we are onto something that is going to bust into. Um, success stories and undoubtedly what I think will happen is that this set of um, fellows to be uh, are, are going to impact their, their profession, their newsrooms, uh, places of work and some of the projects that I got to hear are really, really uh, projects that will have um, significant uh, effects on the society in the positive. The report women is going to the 10th year. I'm very proud to know that over 75 people have benefited from this project and we can see them all across the country. We have been able to build an agency of women, you know, that can um, um, propel gender equality issue in such a way that, you know, the society will benefit from it. And I think there's been more, much more reports, women, I mean, women have been reported. So I am looking forward to um, the investigations that will be done around some of these key issues that they have raised and how that will contribute to uh, the resource on uh, gender equality in this country, how that would also build policy change, which is what is important and also uh, transformative change for women so that we have uh, a better uh, society in future. Today, I truly believe that there are endless possibilities for women to get to the top. Women now need to make up their minds to use our compelling ways and means of telling stories to ensure that women's issues remain front and center in what we do, but then we're owning our stories and telling it the way we should tell our stories. Twelve people who will believe that will be able to finish the fellowship, will become champions, will join the troops that are already championing this course, will be on fire in their newsroom, be able to stand up to status quo that doesn't help, be able to also be voices that are not just always just challenging but helping to build community. So yes, we chose right. These are the champions of the course and I'm excited about what they are going to bring to the table.